Go ahead. Alright, give it... Give it a 10 second burst. Move it around a lot too. The uh, battle shields are held in by two wing nuts. Now the reason for that is I can't ship it with these big things on there. The crate would be too big. Um, these are just uh, quarter 20 wing nuts. You might want to replace those with some lock nuts to hold them in if this is going to be a big static display. Um, otherwise you can take them out. You can take the, the battle shields off. It's a little bit lighter. Um, you know, it just doesn't look quite as good. Uh, these are standard chainsaw triggers. So if you look at it, you got to push in the safety first, then you can squeeze the trigger. Kind of just like a chainsaw. Now if you want to get real crazy with this, each one of these triggers has a locking pin right here. Lock in the safety, squeeze that, and then lock in the trigger. This thing will stay on until you release it. The control panel itself is very simple. you got one main on-off switch. You hit the uh, main power, you've got the green light, and now if you squeeze the trigger, it's going to rock and roll. I'm not doing that right now because i got a little piece of string uh, tied to the barrel to hold it. When you're all done, shut the power off. You could squeeze the trigger all day and nothing's going to happen. The power on switch uh, really controls everything to the uh, ele electronics and motor inside. Um, without the main power up, it's not going to work. Okay, now the ammunition, uh, down here we've got a full flex joint on that. And again, to take out the ammunition feed, there's a cotter pin right here. You can pull that out, pull the pin, and this whole ammo chute will actually disconnect from the tank. Uh, it's pretty simple. Let me show you how that works. Pull the pin, pull the main pin, and out it comes. Now you'll notice on the inside, uh, I've got a threaded rod in there, so when you do put the pin through, uh, it goes through nice and easy. Let's hook it up, get the opening right there, push the pin right through, and a cotter pin on the other side and you're all set. Now don't unbolt these pieces of steel from the 5 16ths. purpose for these is to lock the gun to the pedestal. So the piece of steel hang on the supports, and all you got to do is just put a pin right through and a cotter pin. That way you can drive around, the gun won't bounce up and out of the supports. Now beyond the standard 60 day money back guarantee, we also have our repair policy. If anything goes wrong with this, contact us. It's quite possible we could help you troubleshoot it down to a small piece that you could mail it back to us rather than shipping back the entire gun. Uh, the repair policy uh, takes effect after 60 days, and if there's charges or anything like that, we can we can certainly discuss that. Now for the demonstration today, I had this hooked up to the 12 volt battery in my car. This is designed for a 12 volt system. Um, any kind of vehicle, uh, truck, car, um, lawn tractor, anything like that would work. But you need to be careful that uh, this will be a heavy duty current consumer. It will uh, really uh, take a big uh, bite out of the battery if you don't have something big. Um, we are running this machine on, uh, there's actually a starter motor from a V8 boat is actually the main drive motor. So it does take a big bite of electricity to make it work. When mounted in the, uh, in the position, we've got a full 180 degrees of rotation. Um, you can't really see it now, but I've got almost 20 degrees down and if it was not uh, held in place by the string, you'd get uh, almost 80 degrees pointed up. This is the 50 caliber rotary cannon from Unusual Machines. This is representing the uh, M41 on the back of the Halo Warthog. 
and at Unusual Machines, we believe the Master Chief himself would be very pleased with uh, using this gun. Move it around a lot too.